guys welcome back to the channel I am Mick from the MLF Network and today let's discuss Animal Kingdom season 4 episode 4 tank so we start off this episode with Pope you know kind of pacing around and Angela following him around like a lost little puppy trying to start up a conversation I don't know what her her motive is if she truly likes Pope or is she out for something else? I don't know. We don't know yet. We have to wait on that. But basically, Pope is giving her this vibe to like, you know, bitch, why you talking to me? Why? And then she like gets the courage to ask, do you not want me here? Do you want me to leave? Do you want me to go somewhere else? And he was like, Bitch, what are you talking about? I like you. Stay, bitch. Stay. Like, <laughs> anyways, so she's trying to tell Pope that your mom has been out there all night. She's moping around. Something's wrong with her. Go check on her. And Pope is like so reluctant to go check on Smurf. Like he just walks past her like on his way to work, minding his goddamn business. Then he's like... <sighs> Fine, what do you want? What do you want, bitch? What do you want? And then she, like, has this weird conversation with Pope. Like, do you remember Tank, Julia's cat, when he disappeared? <laughs> she thought it was you. And it's like, okay. Like, where did that conversation come from? Like, Smurf, what are you on? So on the day of the job, Jay and Darren have concerns about Frankie. Like, you know, we don't trust her. We don't know anything about her. Do you fully trust this woman? Because Smurf always says, trust no one outside of the family. And Smurf is correct. Because you don't know these people from Adam. You don't know their motives. You don't know if they're going to screw you over. You don't know if they're going to rat you out. You don't even know if they're undercover cops. Somehow, I am thinking Frankie might be an undercover cop. Because like I said last video, how they wrote her in. They wrote her in really effing funny. Like, how is she this high class thief? And she's coming in with Billy, the bottom of the barrel. Bum. It, it, it makes no sense. I do like her character. And I like how um, she is making Craig step his game up and use his actual head, you know? Because like, as I said last video, last review, that him spraying and tagging the art piece was genius. So the boys do a job, they they hijack the truck, and I, I don't think they let Pope in on it. I don't think Pope was in that. You correct me if I'm wrong. So after they hijack the truck, they deliver it to this billionaire thief for to Frankie's boss. And then they just drive away and they're looking for their cut. And she gives him a measly 40k. She, he's like, bitch, what? My ass is on the line with my brother's motherfucker. I give them my word, bitch, that you was on the up and ups. That you was going to come through. Bitch, if you ain't got my money, <laughs> mm. You're going to know what time it is, honey. You're going to know what time it is. But I feel like he should have never trusted Frankie. And I feel like this whole episode, except for Pope, that all the boys, you know, have to deal with their repercussions of trusting people outside of the family. Darren, trusting that, that, that friend that he did a job with, trusting Adrian, um... Jay trusting Mia, Craig trusting Frankie, and it all came back to bite them in the ass. With Mia, I am so disappointed in that hood rat bitch. I was rooting for you. 
I was rooting for you, ho. And you just proved that you is a hood rat, ho. And you can't take the hood out of the rats. Okay? So you leave the rat alone. So Jay had no business in taking you on. But Jay, you could have at least had called the bitch to come get her stuff. To put her stuff out there on the road, on the streets. Like, damn. And, like, how he didn't even really put it in garbage bags. And, like, the stuff that she had, she looks like a nasty asshole. <sighs> Jay, please find yourself a better woman. Find yourself a new love interest. <sighs> I'm tired of your love interest. I am tired. So she gets pissed the hell off. Like, you ain't put me out, motherfucker, without a fight. You ain't doing this shit to me, you motherfucker. You know who I am? You know who I am? Like, really? So she comes back with her boyfriend. She smashes up his place. She ransacks the place. But, you know, they leave with nothing. But I don't know what those papers were. Like, tell, if you know, tell me in the comments what those papers were in his safe. But he was so relieved when they didn't take the papers. I feel Mia should have kissed Jay's ass to get back in his good graces instead of doing this hood rat shit. I had higher hopes for her. I thought she wanted to get out of that lifestyle. I thought she wanted to like, you know, swim with the big dogs instead of these gang banging hood rats. But Mia, you disappointed me. You disappointed me this episode. So with Darren, when he did this job with this guy, he should have never did this job. I don't remember what the guy's name, but he came up to his bar and he basically outed Adrian. He says like, oh, um, Adrian loses all over the continent. So how is it that he's getting sponsored? It makes no sense. He is in, you know, cahoots. He's in bed. He's in business with this guy named Jack. And I want in. And Darren is hella confused because he doesn't know that Adrian is going behind his back doing this thing. And he also doesn't know that Adrian is working with the FBI or the DEA or whoever they are. So Darren asks him like, if I don't let you in in this thing with Jack, what are you going to do about it? Like, what's up? And the guy like made an unspoken threat. He just drank his rank and he left. It's like, bitch, you know what time it is if you don't let me in. So let's not mince for words. Okay, so with Frank, you don't put your brothers at risk for somebody you just met, okay? You put all of their livelihood online. You don't know if this woman is an undercover cop. You don't know who she is. You don't know who her bosses are. Anything could go wrong and they don't pay you your money. And like from the trailer for next episode, it looks like they don't get paid. And this is exactly what Smurf was talking about. You don't trust people outside of the family, okay? Then we get a flashback with Smurf and Colin. They're sleeping in the woods. Colin just gets out, freaks out. He's like running through the woods with Smurf like, oh, we gotta get away, they're onto us and blah, blah, blah. And like, he's really paranoid. And I'm thinking, like, who's after them? So he seems like he's schizophrenic. So you can't tell me this is not Pope's dad. They have the same crazy mannerisms, okay? And I like the point that Smurf said to the other gang members that, oh, yeah, it's funny that you could say all that bullshit behind his back. He was just here in your face. Why you had all that tough talk to tell him to his face. He was not, like, in the, in the group, 
all of you would have looked like switching ass pussies. I was like, okay, Smurf, you got a point. You got a point. Because if you want to have all that tough talk, tell him to his face. Don't wait till he leaves so you could say it behind his back and laugh at him. Okay? That's not cool. No bueno. So the agent catches Darren in his light. Like last review, I said he should have lied about Darren's name or some shit because you don't think he's going to look into all of your affiliates, see who they could catch. And Cody, oh, jackpot. They've been trying to catch the Cody's for a long, long time. Like, ugh, like jackpot. He gets Jack and Jack's bosses. And the Cody's bitch promotion is in check. Anyways, when you decide to become an informant or snitch, for the FBI, for the police, or for whoever, bitch, it's not a one-time deal. They're gonna try to use you to get all the big fish. Big fish you have not even met in your life. And how it ends, it ends with your dumb ass in a body bag. Snitches get stitches. Learn it, honey. But I feel, I have a funny feeling, Darren is going to kill Adrian. He's going to kill that other friend who came around threatening him this episode. I have a funny feeling. And Frankie, your time is coming too, I feel. Who else? I don't know what's going on between Angela and Pope, but let's see. But oh gosh, at the end of the episode... When Pope discovers that this bitch Smurf repainted the room and took off Lena's name. He was hella pissed. He was a big ass mad. He's like, Smurf! And then like he's looking for her and then he sees her on the floor and he does not know how to react. He wants to still be pissed. He wants to beat the bitch into her grave. And I feel if Angela wasn't there, he would have beat the bitch. <laughs> he was like, oh shit, what do I do? I want to beat you, but, but you're dying. Okay, okay. But anyways, this is my review for this episode. You tell me how you felt about this episode. What did you think about, you know, um... You know, Smurf repainting Lena's room. What did you think about Darren's situation with this friend? What do you think about Frankie and Craig, Jay and Mia's situation? You let me know and let's get this discussion popping. And until next time, make life fabulous even when it's not. And I will see you in the next video.